Hey, this is Alex with Grow How. Uh, recently on social media from my town of American Fork, the city was talking about saving water and the usual people are always getting on and just dissing the city and saying the city is doing nothing. And one particular person really was slamming on the parks. You know, I know what the parks were water like last year. I saw it. And so I went out today earlier and I videoed a number of those parks. I've cut it down to only three of them because they're all actually really representative of what I saw across the city. The first park is going to be Art Dye Park. This is where we have probably most of our sports fields. Uh, you'll see this is fairly green. I mean there are in the distance brown spots out there. You know yellow spot there. You know spotty out there. And yeah, you can see it's a soccer field. There's some dry there, dry there. Not the driest, this is not the wettest. There are a couple areas that are wetter. And you know, they're greener, I should say. And again, for a sports park, I, I don't feel like this is inappropriate. Because this is one that, that somebody was just viciously complaining about online. This is what prompted me to do the search is Oh, they're just overwatering and it's hideous. Okay, I would really like to see the person's lawn who's complaining about this. Is this hideously green for a drought? Yeah, it might be greener than I want my home lawn. In fact, it's definitely greener than I want my home lawn. But this is a community area where we have sports, we have fairs. If we do not have water here, then we have mud and dust and, and hard pan. You decide. Art die is done. Next park is going to be Lions Park. Hey guys, this used to be a, a uh, practice field plus a park, Lions Park. Spent a lot of time here attempting to learn baseball. I will not say I succeeded, but I tried. And there it is. You'll see lower down the frame, you'll see some yellow. And then as you go further and further back, you'll see more of a brown, yellow to brown. Uh, up close, it really is quite green. Probably I would go for a, a nice crispier look. But then again, the property I maintain is hard to balance that well. That's the dream, that's the goal. The reality is you do the best you can. I'm also gonna point out, this is a treed park. I'll avoid pointing that at the sun for you. So up in this area here during the, uh, the heat of the afternoon, that area is going to get more shade. So it is going to be greener even under the same amount of water. The next park is going to be a Triangle Park. I am not going to say anything at the first of this video. I'm going to pan through the park. I'm going to let you decide. Go ahead, put your comments below about Triangle Park and whether you think it's being watered just from that first bit. Now, this, like the other parks, is showing a lot of modeling. You know, there's, there's green patches, like I'm focusing on right here. But most of this is very brownish yellow. This was a park that was complained about for overwatering. Again, down in the comments below, tell me what you think about this. Is, is it fair to bitterly to bitterly complain about the city overwatering this park. Yeah, we got the strip of green here. Yeah. Okay, we got some green. Wait, okay. We'll go back over there. We got some green. Again, it is under the tree. And then we got all this. Is this overwatered? Should this be complained about as being a real problem, a real issue? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say hell no. Okay, that was Triangle Park. Now I'm going to show you some of the neighbor's yards and my yard. I mean, if I'm going to criticize somebody else, I at least have mine open up and you can say what you want about my yard. And that, I think, is fair enough. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. Water's running, not optimal. But I'm willing to bet that nobody's ever talked to these folks. They have nothing else to compare it to. All the people complaining don't have much of anything or they've got lawns as green as this. Again, this is another property that's been through a couple owners. Um, it's fairly green. Got some brown there. 
it's fairly green it's lush a lot of the grass is uh, probably tall fescue non-turf type it's water hardy see right there definitely some yellow over here first blush that strip looks mighty green but you're seeing yellow around the edges and under this tree is really nice and green uh, you go over and as you get out of the shade it starts getting brown this is an older family that lives here they're good folks okay they're doing their best for what they understand and what they know I don't criticize that then you'll get to see the real scourge of the neighborhood my lawn or what's left of it yeah I'm in the middle of a pruning project this tree is gonna be gone by the end of the year I'll get some help from some friends and family I got a little bit of lawn left here because I water for the tree. I'm in the process of gradually spraying all that out. How to redo the irrigation on this and it'll get done by the end of this year. And then next year I'll start uh, with new irrigation. I'll start in with perennials and cool stuff that can be watered with drip. I'll tell you right now, a lot of neighbors hate my guts and that's okay. Do I expect everyone to do what I do? Now that wouldn't be fair now, would it? Do I expect them to try and improve step by step until they find something better? I don't know if I expect it, but I ask it. Now you've seen some of my neighborhood. I've tried to make sure that the houses are not easy to identify. I don't want to invade anybody's privacy, even though it is, you know, a public view. And you've seen my yard and you can go ahead and, and rip me in the comments. That's fine. But one thing as I was working on this project that just was so dominant is the culture of criticism that we have in the U.S. I mean, I've criticized people on this channel before. I, I've criticized watering sidewalks, and, and that is to accomplish a sense of water conservation. Maybe I'm wrong in doing that. But I really, really struggle when you have people that make criticisms and, and, and harsh criticisms that really aren't backed up by what the open evidence is. Sometimes we see things and we make assumptions because we see them. Oh, they water the park every night or every day. Yeah, well, it's a big park. They probably are watering at least sometime every night. Uh, this is Art Dye Park in particular because it's a big park. There's going to be water running somewhere in that park every night because it's a big park. You're not going to get it all done in eight or 10 hours. It's a lot to cover. And then there goes the assumption of something else. Oh, well, I see the water on, so it's all getting watered. I see they're wasting water. There's a strip that a sprinkler head's broken on and, and it hits the driveway or it hits the parking lot. Yeah, those need to get fixed. But by saying the city or a corporation is wasting water because a single head is broken, or even 10% of the heads are broken, you know, a good chunk of my guy's week at work, I, I've got one gentleman who's really great, does a lot of my sprinkler repairs, a good chunk of his week is fixing sprinklers. I have the manpower to do that. American Fork is not the city where the, all the wealth is in this county. And so I really, while I encourage you to be aware and I encourage you to talk about it, I really, I have to say, you've, you've got to up your game if you're going to be a critic. And by upping your game, I mean, you've got to know what you're talking about. You've got to be able to document, well, yeah, this place at this time consistently has this problem rather than saying, oh, I see it happen all the time and generalizing it. Uh, none of these parks had any evidence from the landscape that they were being watered continuously every day or every night. There's just, there's no evidence for that. You've got to understand what it takes to run one of these. I've worked in cities, I've worked in institutions, I've worked for the Mormon church. I've got a pretty good idea what it takes to get stuff done. And, and sometimes it's a lot different than what you need to do when you're taking care of your home. And a lot of homeowners are not aware of that. They think because they got a quarter acre lot and they got some turf and they got some trees that they know everything. And I have people, had people tell me 
that because they have grass at home, they know everything. Maybe you don't. The third thing is, is if you do see something, rather than calling in and giving a vicious complaint, call in and ask some questions. You know, why is this happening? Can you explain this? Is this sensible? But when you do that, make sure you can document, well, yeah, this, this is getting turned on every night for watering. It may not be what you like, but there may be a reason behind it that makes sense and that they can bring it all together and you can say, well, you know, actually, yeah, I'm wrong. And, and I have found that in my career. So it's something to think about. And certainly don't get on social media and get angry and spat off about something unless you can back it up because you're going to get somebody like me that's going to fact check it and is going to say, uh, you're being a dork and you're wrong. And in this case, I have to say the person that was making these complaints really looks very dorky and looks very wrong. If you like this video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. YouTube doesn't know I exist. I'm hoping to change that in the next year. Catch y'all later. Manana.